Now, let's talk about function scopes. Our main objective when working with functions is to make them completely isolated and independent. A black box, as we usually say. Sadly, that's not always the case. A function is created within a context, a shared environment. It resides next to the main program that defines it, its parameters, and the return values, among other things. Function scopes will set the rules for the cooperation of a function and its environment. When talking about function scopes, we'll identify things as local scopes or global scopes. It might sound like complicated jargon, but don't worry, it isn't that complicated. I even find it intuitive, especially given the rules imposed by Python for function scopes. So let's start from the beginning. Let's talk about local scopes. To introduce local scope, we're going to start with a really simple example. We have a basic function definition. It doesn't accept any parameters. It defines only one variable inside and prints it. Then in line five, you see we're just trying to run that function. We're invoking it. Line seven, I'm going to show you that in a second. But for now, I just run it. There you go. And it works. So local scope means that all the variables defined within a function are local and exclusive to that function. Translated, it means that we cannot access those variables defined inside a function from the outside, from the main program. So if I try to access it from outside, what I get is an error, right? Like line seven, because local, local var is not defined. As simple as that. And again, this is intuitive. If I'm defining variables inside a function, those variables will be um, local and exclusive to that function. They will, they will not be shared right from the outside world. Now we're going to introduce global scope. And to put it simple, global scope is everything that it's not local. That means everything that it's outside in the main program. So you can think as your code has two different pieces, everything residing within a function and everything that it's outside, everything that is outside, we're going to call it fancy name here. We're going to use global scope for that. So for example, global variable, right? Some global variable is part of the global scope. Again, local variable is of course part of the local scope of the scope test function. So what we try to show you with this example is that the, the a function will be able to access the global scope, right? So scope test, the function inside can access the, the global scope, can access everything outside everything surrounding it all right so everything in the global scope is accessible but that scope test within scope test we are reaching some global variable all right so we we have a handle on that from within the function but as we saw in our previous example the opposite doesn't happen the global scope doesn't have access to the uh, functions the variable sorry defined inside a function so the global scope does not have access to local scope, but functions do have access to the global scope. They can reach out all right, to their main global scope. So now let's put these pieces together to answer the question, can a function modify variables defined in the, the global scope? And of course, you know the answer already, and it's no, the function will not be able to change a global scope. But let's see an interesting example of a function redefining a variable that it's already present in the global scope and what's going on. All right. So in this case, we have a simple example. We are defining some global variable outside in the global scope as a dog. And then we're defining this function scope test that also defines some global variable. And now it's, of course, a cat. So again, it's the same name for, for the variable right and we're going to see how these is working together when we invoke scope test what we see let me just run that what we see is that of course some global variable is taking the value a cat all right so we saw previously that a function could read the global scope right and in this case it seems like we're changing it but we're not actually changing it as you're going to see in a second so now let's let me come in comment out these line and see what happened with some global variable. 
from the global scope. I am no longer inside a function, I'm just in the global scope. And if I run it, you will see that some global variable is still pointing to a dog. So what's going on here is that the scope test function, it's defining a new variable, some global variable, that has the same name of the one in the global scope. So the only thing that scope test is doing that the function is doing is shadowing or covering the previous variable, the, the one in the global scope, because it has defined, it has redefined a new variable with the same name. So it's not actually changing the one in the global scope, it's defining a new local variable, in this case named some global variable, that happens to have the same name with the one in the global scope. So it's just completely losing access to it because once this function has defined this variable in line four with uh, with the same name, it can no longer access the one in the global scope. It has completely missed a handle to that one. And it's not changing anything. It's just defining a new variable inside. And when the function finishes, that variable is destroyed and we are never changing the original one, one in this case, some global variable. So that is a really important concept here. We can't simply change the, the global variables from within a function, from within local scope. So we've spent a few minutes talking about scope and how local scopes was shadowing the global scope, our previous example, and how it was impossible to modify global scope from within a local scope. Well, happens there happens to be a way, it's not recommended, and we want to stress this fact, it's not recommended to modify global scope from within a function, but there is a way. I wanna show we want to show it to you so you learn about these tricks. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I will try to modify the count variable, which is in the global scope from within a function, right? So if I run this test, there you go, it fails, right? Because uh, it says that it's unbound. There is a trick to modify the global scope and it's with the global keyword, the one you see there. This global keyword will instruct Python and say that we wanna make usage of this global variable and wanna make modifications inside our function. So now, if I run this example, I will, of course, modify the variable inside and I will see it, as we already know. But if I also print it outside, I will put a separator here. You will see that the variable is also modified outside. So this is, again, not recommended. We are modifying the value of count, right? So let me remove the prints to show it to you again. I am invoking a function and that function is modifying the outer scope. So it's not recommended, but you can do it. Once again, try not to do this. We see these examples of global management and modification whenever there is one big global variable like the state of a game or an application that many, 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 many different functions are trying to access and modify. And it's usually a um, more lazy solution to just use global scope. A better solution is always pass the, the variables as, as parameters, all right? So don't do this. I want you, we want you to know it. So if you're ever reading it, you understand what's going on. Try never to modify scope from within a function. So in this lesson, we've explored the idea and the concept of scopes. You saw that local scope basically means all the variables defined within a function, inside a function. So in this case, local variable is a local variable and it's not accessible from the outside world. We also talked about accessing global scope from within a function, so that is possible. Global scope cannot access local scope, but local scope can indeed access global scope. So in this case, we have access to the variables defined outside. We also talked that when we are redefining a function inf inside a, var a variable inside a function, we are declaring a variable inside a function that has the same name 
or if, uh, of a variable in the global scope, we're not modifying it, we're not modifying the one in the global scope, we are just redefining a new variable for the scope, in this case, scope test function for the function itself, and it's not changing the one in the global scope. And finally, we saw how to modify global scope, although it's not recommended, again, it's not recommended, but you know what's going on when you see this global keyword in some piece of code.